the education, it seems, to, has taken a bit of a, a leap forward, potentially, into the online space since uh, we spoke last. Um, the corporatization potentially, of the, the, the education space with some big-name players throwing their hat into the ring. Yeah. Um, can you take us through what what is being proposed? We, we think this might go, and then we'll pick it apart, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, Mark, I thought the timing would be right, because for the last couple of years, most schools around the world have been using Zoom or other portals to deliver a lot of instruction. So much has gone online. But where is this going? I don't know if it's good or bad. We'll hint a little bit at mm. both. But uh, for those listening at home, I'm holding up to you like a Nokia old dumb phone, the one that used to be out there about 15 years ago, which most people had mm-hmm. that... You could, it just, all you could do is really talk with it, right? Yeah, amazing. It was a, a, a you'd uh, it'd be able to call people, send yeah. a message, and play the snake game. That's probably about yeah, it. Yeah, and the snake <laughs> game came along, and it was a really big hit. It was. But mostly it was a phone. that We used it mostly to talk. The way schools have been run for the last several hundred years since there have been schools is primarily teachers talk, students listen, there's exams. Sometimes those exams are written in pencil, then pen, and maybe they were typed. But mostly that's the metaphor of kind of uh, Mm -hmm. dumb school, old school model. Now, my phone, I really don't even use as a phone. When we communicate, we're texting or emailing. Sometimes we call when we're in lockdown. But this is really called a phone, but it's actually my uh, bank. It's my personal assistance, my diary. It's uh, where I connect to my granddaughter. It's my way to connect to the world. It's your library. It's your photo album. It's all of those things. Uh, Movie studio. Have schools adjusted in the way in which they deliver education, or are we still primarily doing it the dumb phone or the smartphone way? And those major companies out there that already are in that world are starting to seize what could be the education space, both the kindergarten through year 12 and the tertiary education space. And they have big plans to steal our lunch. All right, as long as it's not the lunch money, I guess, Joe. Or maybe it is the lunch <laughs> Same money. Thing. Um, so there were a couple of names that you dropped to me before we started. The, the Google, Netflix, big players, big multinational names. How do we say, well, let's look at a company like Netflix. How, how, how will someone like that um, delve into the educational look at, world? Look at what Netflix has. They have a platform where right now, and there's other Stan and other streaming services, they know me, they know my name. They know what I watched, they know where I was, and they tell me what I might like, and they stack it up for me, and they say, you might like this, and a platform I actually kind of like makes it easy on me. Imagine the textbook store of your, used to be my backpack or my school locker, where that's your locker for all the materials you need. So they have the platform. Amazon has the shipping capacity and leverage And they are the number one world cloud-based service. Actually, Netflix hosts their portal on the Amazon Web Services. To think two rivals, Amazon Prime and Netflix. Actually, Netflix runs it off Amazon. And then um, in the space of Google, they have basically the universal library of information, good, bad, and ugly. You put those three together, do you think they could form as good a curriculum assessment scheme as what we do in every state or province in the world? Do you think that we could get our books the next day (laughs) shipped to us if we still wanted a book? (coughs) Do you think that um, we would need to invent our own platform Mm. for the distribution of that that video? Because doesn't Netflix have the best in the world right now? Put that together. What they're going to do is decide what the curriculum is, what the (coughs) instructional methods are, and what the assessments will be for us. And they're going to do it for four ninety nine or eight ninety nine, not eleven thousand dollars, and try to take the world's marketplace from education. So here's the trick, John. Um, as I cough, so I'm going to get you to keep going for a minute there. Um, I'm, I'm going to cough. I'll be done. So keep That's going. Okay. Yeah. So what I think we've got to do in the space of the <laughs> educational environment is to really get excited of how these are supplementary to the school experience, not predominantly the way we do work. Uh, It's a little bit like Mr. Data on the Star Trek show back um, when he was one of the lead characters in Next Generation, where he was a main character, but he was second to the human still in charge. He was some of the brains, he was some of the brawn, but he wasn't the person in charge. We've got to try to find a way that the human component, the arts, creativity, humanities, the innovation inquiry, and sort of innovation sciences stay rule, because we're still in control of that. This keeps my video, but I still determine what that video is about. I can still determine what I read. 
companies like Facebook are trying to tell me what to read. So how do we take control of it? So if they have these platforms and new ways to do learning, it's still us deciding the journey through it. Because right now, most of the world is getting their news feed from their social media app, and it's feeding them what they want to tell us or the preferences of our politics that might not like us be open-minded. So how do we control this is the main message. In this, I could control it. I'm talking to Mark, we have a conversation, but it wasn't running my life. This is starting to run our life, that smartphone. And uh, I think we're going to have to take charge so that we can be smarter than that until it's all too late. I'm not sure when that is. We've got at least mm. 10 years, Mark. We can still run the show. Look, the, the next decade with uh, all of these things coming and going, the changes in these spaces, it'll be very interesting to see if we can harness the good stuff but sort of still keep that uh, individuality in there as well. It'll be an interesting ride, John. And capture those tools and use them, not be afraid of them, but not let them run our lives. And I think that's where some of the platforms run by people like Zuckerberg are dangerous because they have some agendas which are actually to make us more narrow-minded. And I think we want to try to go to the places which leave human experience in charge. Might be a losing bet, but we got to try. Well, I think you're right because the further up the chain we go in this direction, um, the further away from the, the, the target that we get. So... Um, who do we actually want setting the agenda, right. or to have more control over the agenda? That will be where the interest will be where the tough conversations have to happen. And the more teachers and universities take charge of that, the better, rather than letting the multinational corporations decide. Because ultimately, they want to make money, and we want to make things better. Mm. So that's why I want us to to be thinking about this and stay in control at least for a while. Resistance may be futile, though, Mark, <laughs> eventually. Good stuff. All right, John, we'll talk to you in a fortnight. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. There he is, a professor of education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, on the corporatisation of the education space today on 2NURFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.